This video introduces a centuries-old calculus technique called the method of exhaustion. It not only provides us with a richer understanding of how modern calculus works, but is indeed still relevant today. All right, let's start this off with a brief history of calculus, and you'll see why in a moment. So we have evidence dating back to about 4,000 years ago in 1800 before the Common Era. So we have an Egyptian papyrus from back then with area calculations on it. So we know that calculus, so this is an example of something like integral calculus, we know that this has been around for at least about 4,000 years, potentially longer. We just don't have records of it or we haven't found those records yet. The method of exhaustion, which we are covering right up next, was developed originally by the Greeks, Eudoxus and Archimedes in 400 and 250 before the Common Era, respectively, so over 2,000 years ago. And it was independently developed in other cultures, such as by the Chinese, in this case, a little later, about 500 years after Archimedes, for example. A few centuries later, Arabs, such as Al-Haytham, used integrals to calculate volumes. And in other independent cultures, the Indians in the 14th century had differentiation-like methods. So all of these other things that I've described have been related to calculating area and integrals. And this was the first record that we have of differential calculus. By the 17th century, Gottfried Leibniz in Germany and Sir Isaac Newton in England independently developed modern calculus. So this includes higher order differentiation and the integration techniques that we use today. This includes rules like the product rule and the chain rule, which we will cover in this Calculus One subject. Leibniz named calculus, we'll talk about that more soon, and he devised a notation for calculus that is my preferred one. So we'll mostly use his. Later on, we'll talk about notation. I'll show you a few different ways to annotate differentiation. And yeah, you'll see why I like his so much. We'll talk about that more then. Newton, on the other hand, was the first to apply calculus to physics. So for example, he applied calculus to the laws of motion as well as gravity. And you may recognize Sir Isaac Newton as the discoverer of gravity. All right, so the method of exhaustion has been around for a very long time, but it is still super relevant to the calculus that we have today, and I will show you why. So the method of exhaustion allows us to identify the area of shapes. So let's start off by talking about polygons. Polygons are shapes with multiple straight sides. So technically even a triangle is a polygon, a square or a rectangle is a polygon. But typically when we're talking about polygons, we're talking about shapes with five or more sides. The Greeks learned how to find the area of polygons by filling it with triangles. So for example, if we have this hexagon here, we can divide the hexagon up into a rectangle and then four triangles and we can use those five different shapes to calculate the area of the whole hexagon. So the rectangle in the middle, we calculate its area as height times width. And then this part up here, consisting of two triangles, has an area of half. This height G times width W. And same thing with the two triangles at the bottom. They together have an area of half of g times width. So all together by adding up these three components, we get the area for the entire shape. The method of exhaustion builds upon the idea that I just showed you to find the area of curved shapes. So if we have a circle and we would like to find the area of that circle, well, one way that we could approximate it is by putting a square inside of the circle and calculating the area of that square. But as we can see, that isn't going to be too accurate because we're missing all of the area 
out in these four sections. So if we were to fill that same circle with a hexagon, we can use an approach like I showed on the preceding slide to calculate the area of that hexagon. And this is going to be closer to the area of the whole circle. The bits that we're missing have shrunk. And then same thing, if we extend this to, the, to an octagon and we calculate the area of the octagon, now the area that we're missing is a pretty small amount of the circle. This is starting to become a reasonable approximation of the circle. So continuing this logic, the method of exhaustion continues to use polygons with more and more and more sides until we have a polygon with a theoretical infinite number of sides. And that's because this polygon with an infinite number of sides corresponds exactly to the area of a circle. So integral calculus is directly based on this method. And calculus in general relies upon the idea of approaching infinity like this. So Leibniz, when he coined this field, he gave it the name the calculus, just making calculations of the infinitesimals. And we don't use that later part uh, to describe it anymore, but we still call this subject area calculus today. In the next video, we'll make use of this same concept of the calculus of the infinitesimals, but instead of applying it to the integral branch of calculus, we'll apply it to the differential branch. See you there.